Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm back with another marine tank video. So a few weeks ago I decided to finally get an anemone, something which didn't go to plan a couple of years ago and I said to myself I would never get one again, but as time went on so did my curiosity. The reason I was so annoyed last time is because I was basically sold an already bleached anemone which the guy tried to sell me as a green anemone. Now of course it lasted about a week or so and I had to remove it before it nuked my entire tank. I then read a few horror stories on anemones about clogging filters, wave makers and killing corals so I decided not to get one again. So why did I decide to get one now? Well I've always been really fascinated by the vast amount of symbiotic relationships within the marine hobby. Pistol shrimps and gobies, anemones and clownfish and even algae and corals just to name a few. Now of course most people get an anemone for their clownfish to host and with my pair displaying breeding behaviours I thought this would be the perfect time to get an anemone too, but when I went to the shop to buy one I was informed that they had a porcelain anemone crab. And as I stated previously I absolutely love symbiotic creatures within a tank so I had to get one. My hope is that due to the size of the anemone it will eventually split giving the clownfish an anemone of their own. With the crab being within the anemone the clownfish aren't really too interested plus I've seen it having a couple of swipes at them the other day when they get a little bit too close. So what exactly is a symbiotic relationship? A definition by the Natural History Museum states it's a close association formed between pairs of species. There are however a few different forms such as parasitism where of course one party only benefits from the situation and the other can effectively be harmed or killed in the process. Another is commensalism where one party benefits at no expense of the other, but I think the type of symbiotic relationships that we tend to see in our fish keeping hobby is mutualism. This is likely the most accurate definition we're aware of as fish keepers is when both parties benefit from each other or the interaction. In the case of the porcelain crab and the anemone, the anemone provides a protective home from predators for the crab. In return, the crab cleans the anemone by eating food scraps and mucus off of the anemone's surface. This crab is actually immune to the sting of the anemone, and the crab being on the anemone does not trigger any kind of feeding response, and the anemone can still detect food on its tentacles when the crab is on the anemone. These crabs have evolved over many many years to live with an anemones and it's not recommended getting one without an anemone. If found as a hitchhiker in your tank and you don't have an anemone, then it will likely try and host some kind of coral. So I guess I should give a little bit of information on the anemone. This is a bubble tip anemone. Now they do require good water quality so it's not recommended adding them to a system any younger than 6 months old, but I do think they're a lot hardier than people give them credit for. Just ensure your water conditions are kept consistent and they will do well. Also feeding them regularly helps, especially once they've first been added to your system. Feeding schedules seem to be widely debated online but I feed mine a few times a week. This includes krill, mice shrimp, chopped mussel and brine shrimp. Now, if you have a clown hosting your anemone, you don't need to feed them as much as the clowns will feed the anemone both through leftover food and um, their own poo. As mentioned previously, they do require good lighting but again, lighting schedules vary online but mine gets about 5 hours of white light per day and it seems to do just fine. They will move around a lot to begin with but once they find a good spot they'll just stay there so be aware they can sting corals in the process but all in all my experience this time with a healthy anemone from the beginning has been a lot more enjoyable. On the subject of symbiotic relationships I also did get a lemon pistol shrimp to accompany my gobi but the pistol shrimp has chosen to dig a den at the opposite end to where the gobi is. I have seen the gobi shown a little bit of interest in the pistol shrimp but the shrimp has created too small a tunnel under this little bit of rock but I'm hoping the pistol shrimp will eventually move into the middle of the rock and the two of them can get on. So as always thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video please like it, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.